Welcome to another episode of Light On, where I bring to you and your awareness, the magical, the esoteric, and the lesser known concepts and modalities. If this is the first time that you are stumbling upon my channel, welcome. And if you're my returning subscriber, lovely to see you again. I met our next guest at a very ordinary networking event. And he led with the fact that he works with the divine masculine. And that picked my interest because while I knew tons of people who were working with the divine feminine energies or the goddess energies, including myself, I didn't know too many people working specifically with the masculine energies. The second time I met him, we were guest facilitators at a common event where I had a chance to experience his work firsthand. Please welcome Dhyanat Ali. Diana Tali goes by the title of coach, trainer, team builder, blah, 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 blah. But I don't want you to remember him in any of those ways. The best way to describe him is a mystic and a deeply spiritual soul. Welcome, Diana, and let's explore the vast spaces of divinity with you. Thank you, Shaila. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's always a pleasure to connect with you. Dhyanath, I'm very excited about this entire thing. So before we actually jump straight in, I want to ask you just one question. How did you get into this area of work? Uh, I was a high achiever and very competitive in nature. I've been an adventurer all my life. I've been taking risks. And there was a stage in life uh, which usually was a first phase as a midlife crisis. When I look back at my life, uh, I could see that I was a great achiever. I could uh, do things. Uh, nothing was impossible for me. In fact, I was known for getting things done. In my school, anybody has anything to do, they say, just get it done with Diana. We will do it. Uh, so synonymous uh, with my name. That Diana is high risk taker. He can do things. And in the journey, I've done uh, quite an a number of things, uh, starting an adventure club, uh, growing the team to uh, like 30,000 members. Uh, I've done 600 events. And uh, there was something uh, inside me which was still restless, despite uh, being a high achiever, despite being uh, known for getting things done, despite being known for being bold. There was uh, a lot of inner peace. And my evenings would always be around, uh, how do I rest now? After a long day of achievement, after a long day of doing things, and my days were like 16 hours, 18 hours. I loved that phase. And I did it for almost 10 to 15 years. And then I started thinking, I mean, is this all the picture? Is life only about achievement, uh, I constantly prove myself. Why do I need to do so much? That is where I started thinking and I started taking a step back. I slow down in life. However, that slowing down was not easy because the drive that I have, very innate drive, to which I got validation or recognition was by doing things. And I'm trying to slow down, my inner parts are not happy. A lot of turmoil was going on. That is where I thought that this needs a little more introspection. And uh, I, what I did was slowing down the best thing was nature. So I started doing solo trips. Just went there, sat in nature doing nothing, sitting beside the stream, standing, listening, listening to the wise of nature. There I could find some ease, some peace coming in. Then I found out that there's more to doing things. I mean, there is great wisdom in resting. There is great wisdom in stillness. There's so much power in there. And that's what got me to meet uh, my first master, uh, Sajit Ravindran, to which I did the men's walk. 
it's a nine day walk that i did with them and i did it twice and uh, for almost three years i was with them attending all the events including uh, one event uh, that benefited me a lot called the enlightened relationships we did deep dive into the masculine and feminine aspects and uh, i also did a human potential coaching with sujit where we again deep dive into these aspects of it uh, and that is where i got in touch with my own inner feminine i could find a balance and once i found this balance of wholesomeness there something came up in me when i look at other men i see that they are struggling what i went through they also trying to find their own stillness their own peace or understanding that's where my journey began into doing this work the divine masculine what does that mean as a male how do you have feminine energies within you yeah i think before we get to the feminine or the masculine <clears throat> we'd like to talk about wholesomeness and uh, the divine masculine and the divine feminine are part of the whole however in our culture we try to see them very very separate both of them come from the wholeness there is no separation there but when these energies express in form then they take shape as feminine or masculine however the tragedy of uh, our culture is uh, the moment somebody is born as a male or female they get identified with that however neither the divine masculine nor the divine feminine have anything to do with the form of the gender they are very much part of whole and when a boy is born or a girl is born in a particular form they are in whole terms okay for a boy his form is masculine formless is the feminine and vice versa for the feminine the form is feminine and the formless energy is the masculine and it comes in whole some there is an harmony within and the best example would be if you notice nature nature has both the aspects if the day is masculine then the night is feminine if uh, wherever the light or the sun falls if that is masculine the shadow that results is feminine so they are so tightly integrated and whole that they are not separate they are so harmonious and they are so special the feminine you can always find in the stillness the intuition the creativity the feelings empathy the senses the masculine in activeness in action in pursuing a goal someone who is disciplined feminine is someone who is sensuous and they go hand in hand they are always close to each other they don't separateness however the challenges that we get identified too much identified with one form and they don't see the other one what we keep on hearing from others is there is celebration when a boy is born and everybody identifies the boy with the sex or with the girl and that becomes an identification it's also reinforced again and again the boy always told that boys don't cry and for girls they might say don't do risk taking activities don't do sports you are a girl you have to be gentle you have to be calm so then these stereotypes become very hard them and everybody identifies with their own conditioning and therefore you don't get in touch with their formless or the subtle part that is within and that's that's a struggle that they go through nature is the best teacher to say so every day the sun comes out 
the light is there that's the masculine vibe and then the night comes in after a day's rest everybody has to rejuvenate they have to be still they have to nurture their energies back that is the feminine the masculine will be more around being confident secure feminine would be still has that expressive non judgmental listening phase she receives with care and we can find this all around us in our father in our mother in other women in other men so how do we identify this within and without so first thing is that we have to move away from the stereotypes that i am only masculine or i am only feminine get in touch with the inner masculine or the inner feminine that's where the world of exploration and balance starts where one gets into harmony one's wholeness and if you look at life the majority of people who are, who are successful in life are ones who could discover this balance utilizing both their feminine and masculine strengths otherwise it's a part of struggle in imbalance of just trying to be a masculine part or just trying to be feminine part and that's where this imbalance can create a lot of challenges and i have related in my own stories after so much of struggle and when i thought that i have done it achieved it i could see the emptiness within because of the imbalance and this emptiness will create a lot of challenges in our lives and therefore it is very important to get away from the separation step into the wholeness and to discover that both masculine and feminine are side of the same coin and they are available in this very moment in the here and now to each of us why would you say it is important i know you said that it is to we need to bring our masculine and feminine energies into balance um and one of the reasons why you said is that to come into wholeness what exactly do you mean by saying we need to come into wholeness there is an imbalance of energies what happens in the external world of these people yeah for the masculine uh, the masculine is imbalance it becomes pushy or cold hearted very dominating uh, there's a lot of struggle for relationships because every relationship is transactional it is logical it is rational there is no connection it is all about getting things done and there's also lack of uh, confidence within so externally it might look like achievement in an in there is <clears throat> emptiness because of lack of not being in touch with the feminine internal this fear and there's so much fear that the masculine who is in balance is always thinking that this world is unsafe he is into either competition he is into aggression or he is in withdrawal he doesn't want to take risk a lot of confusion in his own uh, thinking this can lead to procrastination afraid to take action they might not be courageous they might not take bold steps they might not be responsible so these things uh, affect the uh, mass line for the feminine when they imbalance the when they're not in touch with their inner masculine then they might not feel safe they might not feel protected from within they might overgive in relationships they might please people they might uh, become very self opinionated they might not accept change 
unable to be or unable to rest the feminine might get uh, identified with her own emotions and as a consequence she might get carried away into sadness into depression she might have a deep uh, develop a deep sense of neediness and cling on to others might have self doubt or lack of love feeling unworthiness or sometimes jealous so many ways of how the imbalance affects us internally and to compensate the masculine will get into a drive of aggression trying to prove that he is something and that could come as competition that could come as aggression and a lot of things that we notice in the world but the feminine also she might want to prove herself she might want to step externally into power my use manipulation or might become very submissive might become thingy so dependent so a lot of these things come as imbalance and since these are part of our eight thing each of us the masculine or feminine we hide this we don't show it to the world how there is an inner struggle and this struggle is witnessed witnessed in behavior action and we can see it in today's world that the imbalance is also reflected in the way we live the way there's so much aggression violence in the world there is so much uh, neediness clinginess insecurity so all this imbalance is because of not getting in touch the innate uh, masculine or feminine and when we get in touch what happens is we become whole we become one we become like day with sunshine and rest in the night we become like the light and the shadow so what we find is equilibrium we find the balance from the imbalance and that balance is what i call wholesomeness it is this two wheels coming together and moving together in wholesomeness in harmony in equilibrium with each other either the male or the female if there is very high masculine energies and very low feminine energies what what is the outward manifestation outward manifestation would be a sense for somebody who has high masculine traits and there is an imbalance uh, in the feminine so high masculine and you know, low feminine so they are uh, they might be very aggressive in nature very very competitive they will have challenges uh, in terms of establishing relationships because of a more logical and rational approach to life everything is a transaction everything is about doing things and uh, they will appear old they will appear aggressive they may also appear as brute or someone like a persecutor because of getting things done they will not uh, empathize they will not have kindness of the feminine and therefore uh, a lot of the life is around power and control how do i keep power how do i keep control and high masculine energy is also very critical in nature always judging uh, there is aspect of ruthlessness that can harm others masculine energy is egoistic the expression comes with anger uh, and domination and these are the things uh, that are visible whether uh, the gender is masculine or feminine depending on uh, what rights are you displaying more where is the imbalance and where is the energy accessing it more than required and that's where uh, you find uh, most of these things that are there and what and uh, the opposite uh, way where you have 
high feminine energies and low masculine energies in a male or a female the feminine energy when it is out of uh, out of balance or over excess especially for the masculine for the male so one is uh, there is a lot of uh, pressure from the culture the culture will not accept them and uh, the culture would put out of pressure saying i mean you you look like you act like a woman and the way the culture judges is very very traumatic uh, for the masculine or for the male who had identified with the feminine what can happen uh, in terms of their work is they might procrastinate a lot they might not have uh, the energy to do things to take action and uh, they might become needy codependent on somebody else to take care of them they might be more submissive to others they might need need somebody to lead them to guide them and uh, for a man uh, in this culture which is more like sees masculine as even and courageous or uh, somebody uh, who's committed to bold there's a lack of acceptance and this lack of acceptance can create uh, depression loneliness or a feeling that i'm abandoned i'm not seen for who i am a sense of powerlessness that i'm not capable i'm very passive takes a lot of struggle similar uh, for the feminine who has very high feminine energy for the female they might be over giving beyond their capacities or they might be taking a lot in absorbing receiving serving others beyond their capacities which we have to see a lot in our culture where women tend to do things because of a uh, cultural mindset of what they are told and uh, in my work also with the women especially teachers i see that uh, they very high in their feminine energy and uh, they give a lot and in the thing what happens uh, to the female is they forget who they are completely they have no idea that there is a self they have no idea that there is something called i their identity becomes their role it could be i'm a good housewife i'm a good teacher <clears throat> i'm a good wife a good daughter and they get so identified as a profession or the relationship that they fully forget themselves they can also become a victim very passive helpless being very helpless submissive codependent they might get into a cycle of uh, blame and shame all of this blame and shame cycle is very hidden it is internal so it might come up uh, when they are in women circles uh, with those people however it becomes a cycle and that's where uh, they become very sad depressive powerless and very dependent with imbalance so this is what uh, happens up uh, to the feminine and masculine when there is imbalance what do you mean when you say that you work with uh, divine masculine energies what exactly do you do this is a stage uh, for a boy 
or even for a girl or it's not necessary for boys however it's more important for boys to move from the stage of boyhood to manhood and the boyhood energy when it doesn't get transformed into a masculine energy a mature masculine it gets stuck gets stuck in the itself and that's a space of neediness that's a space of not being heard not being acknowledged not being reserved it's called the father wound and this comes up uh, due to any reasons but it primarily comes up from an imprint from a male especially a father could be an elder brother you know it is basically transgenerational and it gets transferred from father to son and from generations because none of them have grown up or have come in that way they mature mature life it is always power domination control and in that the boyish energy doesn't thrive it doesn't come out of its shell when i say when i do work with mature masculine or the divine masculine it is to bring this energy the boyish energy to flourish or thrive in the mature masculine and that is done through a process called initiation so initiation is a very traditional cultural old age you know practice of initiating men when they turn into adolescence and this initiation is generally done uh, the boy taken to attend his retreat and they they are in a company of mature men who guide them in ways of how do we balance the masculinity with the inner femininity so a lot of work on mature masculinity is we're getting in touch with the feminine part to become wholesome it's not about uh, just the power of the masculine or it's not just about becoming a warrior it's also about becoming the king it's about becoming the lover it's about becoming a magician who can impress who can share love so these are archetypes uh, of the masculine energy which needs to be balanced uh, with hidden in the feminine so most of the retreats uh, that are done are done in the wilderness these are very challenging retreats they are physically challenging they are emotionally challenging they are intellectually challenging uh, they are socially and spiritually challenging as well and in this initiation phase by getting exposed to trials and challenges the boyish energy grows into the mature masculine or charge getting into it at the same time it gets in touch with its place of rest that is feminine a place of inner stillness and these initiations are very uh, age old uh, there in many traditions uh, the shamanic traditions the sufi traditions the vedic traditions however in our modern age uh, they have been replaced with uh, i don't know maybe birthday parties or could be graduation ceremonies and a lot of a lot of ways of how we try to replace it however it doesn't have uh, the challenge that is enough to help the boys come out other challenge with especially boys is they are so much overprotected by the parents or they underprotected there is no balance in it when they overprotected they don't grow up because they always need a parent around do things they never become independent right of the masculine is independence 
it's about the confidence the stability the security that i am enough and i can take on the world now i can bold and courageous i am authentic i have that integrity to face life and this the masculine or the male goes out into the world to serve to serve the world and he knows that internally and connected to masculine when i take an action i have something within me which helps me with the kind the kindness in that action so i'm taking that action there's an internal thing that brings kindness so i take kind actions i take actions that help or serve others or serve me for betterment of life mature masculinity is about balancing the inner feminine with the masculine become whole and one aspect of uh, mature masculine is freedom freedom to be independent freedom to do things that i want to move in any direction i want and to have a purpose in life a direction have a structure have a solid grounding to be firm to be bold and these are traits of the masculine but at the same time there is inner space in the structure there is inner space in that firmness if there is fire outside there is water inside if there is light outside there is darkness inside if there is work outside there is rest inside so which you must clean shifts in these energies so day if there is an action there is a challenge there is going out doing things the night it's coming back to the mind surrendering it with resting rejuvenating and then again next day go go out by the masculine energy on its own will not have that strength continuous rejuvenation to go and do things because it will become tired it will become burn out and it can't carry on and that will show up in the body as pains a lot of things will come up for the mature masculine when they are not in balance so this work of mature masculinity is about balancing with the inner feminine but also getting in touch with the basic traits like courage direction purpose honesty integrity being protector being a warrior a peaceful warrior being a lover to share love and not just be transactional but be transformational be a giver all that kindness within so that's the work i do with bringing balance of wholesomeness when i say mature masculinity and uh, this work is equally applicable to women not necessary just for boys but it is more important for men in the generation that we are going now you preempted my question about can this work be done with women also so i'm i'm really loving this concept because when you're saying that when men work with with themselves and get in touch with their uh, balancing their energies what is manifest outside is uh, kindness along with the action that you're taking and every action is done with love yeah okay beautiful so is is there any process that you can share with our viewers uh, the enough that we can uh, that they can do by themselves to balance their energies just get in touch with the breathing and to check our breathing uh, because we see uh, most of traditions they say that the masculine and the feminine are there you know bodies they are available on the time okay and on the left side where the heart is is the feminine we have love kindness and all the right hand side of the body is the masculine the giving and the left is the receiving the right is the courage the action the doing the left is the kindness the empathy the receiving and one quick way is to check our breath in this moment and we can most, most of people are aware of the alternate nostril breathing what you can do is 
quickly you can close one of the nostrils. Okay. For example, if you close the left and if you breathe. Take two three seconds of breathe. And then shift, then close the right and then breathe. So in this breathing, whichever nostril side is more open, that is the energy currently that is manifesting. And for me now it is balanced. You could see that there is free flow. And at other times I see that uh, the left is a little constricted. Then I know that, okay, my feminine is not fully leveraging itself. So then I can see what I can balance with it. So that is one quick way of knowing where we are. The other processes are uh, looking into our bodies. So sometimes uh, there are pains in the bodies and they will come either on the right side or the left side. So any pain that is constantly on the left side is more around an imbalance of the feminine or if it's coming more around the right side then it would be around imbalance with the mass line. And that uh, is the way our body gives an indication that something needs to be done about it. How do we bring balance? And the easiest uh, practice that is to do the alternate nostril breathings. So you alternate between it and that brings in balance. Other thing that brings balance is awareness. Awareness of what is outside and what is inside. At any given time, the form that we see is more masculine. And the formless that is within is a feminine. And it could be vice versa, how you relate, whether you are male or female. However, when we go out in nature, especially for walks, get bare feet, ground yourself, with your feet, solid, strong into the ground. That is the masculine structure, feminine strength, security, protection. At the same time, you get in touch with nature, the trees out there, the birds, the sounds that you hear, uh, the waving of the winds, and there you get in touch with the feminine. Get in touch with the water, that's the feminine aspect. Get in touch with the sunlight, that is the masculine. Get in touch with the moon, that is the feminine. These things are part of uh, our life. Well, quickly, you uh, can walk with one practice. This is more around inner and outer awareness. Uh, so this uh, is generally done with eyes open. This is called inner and outer awareness meditation. The idea here is more to get in touch uh, with our energies, feminine and masculine. So I invite to take a comfortable position, relax with both the feet flat on the ground, the hands could be the knees or by the side. Relax the complete body. You can keep your eyes closed. Closed or open. Open is much better because we'll connect these few things that are outside of us and both uh, inside of us. So take few deep breaths. Inhale. Gently and slowly. Aware the movements in the chest as you inhale and as you exhale. And as you inhale, relate with expansion. That is the masculine. And as you exhale, relate with the feminine. 
that is a contraction. With each breath, get in touch with the masculine and the feminine. Notice the space in between these two breaths. That space of wholesomeness. Where the expansion and contraction meets, where the masculine and the feminine meet. Gently become aware of the sounds that are there. With the sounds of traffic, with the sounds of people speaking. It could be a fan, it could be your AC. Just become aware of all the sounds. And everything you hear is sound. Nothing is noise. There could be variety of sounds. Those that sound bold, those that sound smooth. Connect with the masculine sounds. Connect with the feminine sounds. Gently bring your awareness to your body. Feel your body from your head onwards, your face, your shoulders. Your chest, your stomach. your back, to the thighs, the knees, your feet. Witness your whole body from head to toe and toe to head. And slowly connect to the right side of the body. And imagine sunlight, bright, real sunlight falling on your right side of your body. And imagine the cool shadow on your left hand, left side. These are aspects of the masculine and feminine. And connect with your center part, the rim, between the light and the cool shadow. That's a place where there is wholesomeness. And bring your attention to your left side of the body. Imagine rain with its feet of paddle falling on the left side. Imagine water on your left side of the body. With its coolness, with its rays, with its stillness flowing through your left body. At the same time, imagine the coolness of the water on the right hand side. The admiration of the water, the connection with the water, the source of life on the right hand side. And gently imagine on the right hand side the sunlight. Slowly turning it to warm fire in your right hand side. On your left hand side, you have the water that is still cool. Connect with both of these aspects the fire and the water. 
and middle center was the place of all sunglasses. Place of harmony, place of equilibrium, where both of these fire and water meet into peace, into stillness, into love. And imagine when the fire and water meet, there is smoke that gets converted into a red light. Red light that enters the whole body and your heart. And slowly it converts to orange, to yellow, to green, to blue, violet, and to white. And see. Your entire body flooded with this white light in its wholesomeness, integration of both the masculine and feminine. And whenever you would want, you can leverage either the masculine or the feminine based on your purpose, based on what you want to do. And remember that wherever there is masculine, there is always feminine. Gently you can bring your awareness back to your breath. Notice the movements in your chest as you inhale and exhale. Remembering the expansion of the masculine, contraction of the feminine. The doing of the masculine, the being of the feminine, the old, the old. And take a few moments to come back to your life, holding both these energies in balance. That was beautiful. And I'm, I'm surprised that it is so simple for us to actually connect with our breath. And I think that is one of the things that we constantly forget. Very true. Yeah. So thank you, Diana, for this beautiful, beautiful session. And uh, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom. Thank you, Jala. My gratefulness and gratitude to you. I love the work that you do that brings difference to so many. I'm very grateful to part of this journey. I look forward to work with you and to be in service for you and others out here. Thank you so much. So that was an eye-opening session with Diana Ali. If you need to get in touch with him, do look at the comment box below where I have put all his details in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with whoever needs to see this. Let's spread the light, folks.